Okay, so here we go. This is my first attempt at actually doing one of these, so bear with me if it's not the best. Um, there's going to be a few things I'm going to be talking to you about at the very beginning of this sucker. First of which is, the way I'm actually going to observe this, um, analyze it, talk about it, whatever, is I'm going to pick one lane, or right, I'm going to start with mid, and I'm going to watch the laning phase of just that particular lane, right? So I'm going to watch Kai, everything he does, I discuss whatever's going on here. Then I'm going to switch down to bot lane. I'm going to watch bot lane, talk about what's going on from there. Then I'm going to switch to top, and then last, I'll talk about jungle, okay? Um, now, there's a few different things I was thinking about in terms of how I should approach discussing one of these games. Uh, the first is, do I want to give you guys advice I would give my diamond friends, right? Do I want to give you guys um, advice nitpicking every little detail, talk about the perfect way you could have, should have, would have done things? And I guess I'm still torn on, do I want um, to discuss it at a very high level, or do I want to bring it down a little bit? Um, not down to silver gold, though. I think you guys deserve criticism that belongs at a higher tier. But uh, anyway, just something to keep in mind about how I might be thinking about this game as we go. Now, level one, uh, first things first, uh, you guys should never ever be waiting anywhere at level one unless you're waiting in an offensive position. You're going to want to get wards and vision down as early as possible. So Kai, you should be either in this bush or in this bush. Ideally, in my opinion, you should be here, and you should probably be dropping a ward either in this bush or up on this ramp. Bot lane, you should be either in this bush or this bush. There should all definitely be a ward in this little guy here. Right? Soraka or Twitch should be rushing to drop a ward here right off the bat, and then the other should be going down to this position. Jungle and top, I mean, honestly, there's not a whole lot you guys can do. If I were you guys, I would be sure to get a ward here, or in fact, I'd probably get it up in here and have Oriana just sit in this position, right? A lot of top laners will also sit here, uh, but that's more pro-level stuff. You don't really need to worry about that. Top and jungle, in this side, blue side, doesn't have to worry about much more than that. Um, but yeah, that's really all I got in terms of vision. Now, I know you guys are going to do Gromp. Now, I don't know how I feel about you guys doing Gromp in this position. I mean, they have a Nami Misfortune who can definitely bully you guys, level 1 and level 2. And I know for a fact you're going to take a lot of damage doing this. Now, don't get me wrong. The XP is nice, but there's a reason a lot of teams, and especially in solo queue, don't do Gromp as the bot lane. Um, unless they have something like Janna. I know Soraka can heal, but she's going to burn potions and she's going right. to come to lane. Uh, low on HP and a level one kill is a threat at that point if you're against an experienced laner now. I'll switch to mid and just talk about what's going on here. Uh, I mean, oh, I'm gonna click on the worry so it stays on worry. So, uh, biggest thing is with this particular lane, you're gonna be wanting to um, accrue as much jungle pressure as you possibly can. Uh, a cart this obviously is an easy, easy target for a jungler in the early game. And the thing is, you have Udir. So I'm actually going to pause it here as well to talk about team comps, okay? Going into the draft, I don't know if you guys had a particular style you were going for, a particular strategy you are trying to pull off, but discussing the comp itself, I mean, uh, I should have looked at the pick order, but anyway, Oriana Soraka, Twitch, uh, Tom Kenshin, Udyr. Now this is an interesting comp because there's a couple, two different ways you could play this in terms of team fighting, right? You could do the ultimate peel, right? Twitch becomes the hyper carry and you have... Uh, Oriana, Soraka, and to uh, Tom Kench essentially, which can make sure he has a lot of survivability, right? Um, against a Rengar, it'd be very difficult uh, to ensure that he's 100% safe, but honestly, between Tom Kench eating him, Soraka silencing, healing, and then Oriana's shield and ult, of course, it'd be very, very hard for, for anyone other than Rengar to get on top of him. I mean, the rest of their team has no diving power at all, right? I mean, Gangplank, yes, he can ult to slow you and charge in at you, but. Uh, one way you could play this comp is to have it. entirely a Twitch hyper carry with scaling utility based guys surrounding it, right? The other way you could play the comp is an aggressive engage comp, right? Uh, I don't know what, what, what items Sorak get. What items Sorak get? Sorak get. Okay, so I was going to say, you got Talisman, right? Which you are going to get. A hard engage comp would be nice here, either with a sprint up, run in, or you get the Tom Kench ult behind them, forcing an engagement before they force an engagement. Against a Rengar um, and an MF. Uh, forcing an engagement very hard, very early, is always going to be really beneficial for you. Now, someone's messaging me on League. Um, now, I personally uh, would recommend doing a mixture of those two things, depending on who has the gold, right? If Twitch is fed, you obviously want to have them force engagements, right? So, yes, you're going to be posturing, you're going to be sieging, right? You guys have not horrible siege, okay? Oriana. Uh, against a team trying to defend a siege is very strong because they're going to bunch up around the tower. She could potentially land a big all into a rat tat tat, right? It's going to hurt really bad. And then obviously Soraka can potentially sound like a three or four man silence, which is awesome. Uh, 
Um, and Udyr's just going to run around the do Udyr things. So, again, some things to keep in mind in terms of how this comp went. Their comp is absolutely a hard engage comp to some degree. In between Nami Wave, uh, Rengar ult, and then uh, Gangplank can use his to mess up your positioning while they go all in, right? Um, but there's a few different ways both these teams could play out. Neither leans super heavily toward a hard engage or appeal comp. They both kind of have a mixture of both. So anyway, just look at the mid lane. We're going to start here. Um, so obviously, Kai, you should win this game early. Uh, not this game. You should win this lane early. Uh, Karthus will outscale you. Now, don't get me wrong. Orion's going to scale fairly hard as well. But truth of the matter is he pretty much outscales damage-wise every other mid laner in the game. Now, that is to say, and that's not to say you should be trying to fight him crazy hard early. If you are going to trade with him in lane, one thing to keep in mind is it's actually a pretty good idea to stay in your minion line. Right? I know most mid laners, you're going to want to um, like dance around, constantly maneuvering, that sort of thing. But if you're going to trade with him in mid, you're going to want to stay in your minion line because his Q is going to do reduced damage if it's not hitting a single target. right? And he's going to draw aggro from your minions if you're staying in mid line and actually trying to attack you. And, not to mention that, but he's going to push even harder if you're constantly forcing his Qs onto your minions and nothing else. Okay? Command protecting um, and immediately trading with him is typically a good idea. I'm not going to point out how you could be CSing perfectly here. Obviously, you know ideally what you should be doing in terms of CS. Um, but command protect auto trading. Go in, command protect, Q auto, right? It's it's always going to be a favorable trade for you unless he gets isolated Q damage on you. Um, now he's spamming his stuff pretty crazy hard right now. At this point in the lane, one thing I would probably be thinking about doing if I were in your shoes, right? I mean, obviously you're down a level, uh, but you'd be looking for Udyr, um, Udyr pressure. This is, yes. You'd be looking for Udyr pressure, right? And freaking Karthus is constantly pushed up. Udyr should be walking in here, just showing himself to force a flash or something of that nature. But that's more of a jungle thing. I'll talk about that later. So, um, I mean, early game, you're not going to be able to fight him one-on-one -on -one in the open. You can fight him when you're standing in your minion line. But in terms of fighting in the open, I know it's a little tough. Like this. Right there, I want to point something out. You force his wall, okay? You guys traded relatively evenly, but here's the big thing, right? If that happens where you force his wall and the engagement ends, so the fight's over, your immediate thought should be, where's Udyr, right? Now, if Udyr was doing Scuttle, or doing Scuttle, or doing Wolves, or doing um, Race, okay? Immediately tell him to stop what he's doing and tell him to gank you. Card this with no wall against an Udyr, right, means a free flash or a free kill for you guys if Udyr can walk into that lane and hit him, okay? Um, especially considering he's relatively low here, but anyway, let's see how it plays out. Stay here, my friend. Can I speed this up? That's a good question. Jump alive. Speed up. Here we go. Let's speed it up just a little bit, okay? In terms of how the lane plays out, blah blah blah. Nah, come on, stay on Orion. Yeah, nothing too crazy here. All right, so he goes in for the kill. Now, obviously, he screws up, right? He takes the tower shot. He's dead. Okay, he's gonna drop. If he hadn't taken the tower shot, this would have been a very close fight. Um, but I think given your advantage with auto attacks and the fact that he drew a little bit of minion aggro, right, means you would have won this 1v1 even if he didn't take the tower shot, right? So peeling back just inside tower range, okay, and trading with him constantly would have been a good maneuver. I think you already know that though, so we're just going to go ahead and watch him kick his butt. Don't die to his passive. Honestly, if I was playing that scenario, I, I might have walked up and died to his passive right away. But yeah, make sure you get these minions, okay? Missing as little CS as possible is a good idea. Um, Kai, you probably already know this, but if you have caster minions in the early game, you auto once on each of them, and then the tower do just enough so that when you auto again, it'll kill them, okay? Udyr is right over here while you're backing. You do a good job and actually respond to that, right? But let's be honest, Udyr with no mana isn't going to win this, and you being this low, you're not going to be able to do much. So just make sure when you respond to this, you don't walk, in, walk into a match for Rengar to jump on you and auto Q kill you. It's, uh, honestly... I think Rengar could have killed uh, Udyr there. I'm not sure why he didn't go for it. I guess he thought you were helping him out. So let's speed this up again. You're level 6. Good stuff. Uh, you're down in farm by 6. Against Akarthus, after you won an engagement like that, that should never happen. 
Um, also, your wave is right here, okay? It was tricky because Rengar was in the area, but when you win a 1v1, right, and you know where Rengar is, you push the wave all the way to his tower and then back, no matter what, right? Ideally, you want him to lose as many minutes as possible, and you want to pressure into his tower, and then when you come back, there's less chance of it being pushed into your tower, right? Because then you'd be losing minions. Now, granted, I know you didn't know where Rengar was, and you were low, so sometimes it's hard to make that call. But if Udyr was right here after that fight, and Karthus was dead, and you guys were together, I think if you walked up and two-man pushed it together and then back, that would have been ideal. Because look, you, you lose so much experience and gold here, just from this, right? Like, this is so much, like, so much just got lost here, right? And it's not because you did anything bad, like, you didn't, like, make a horrendous play or anything, it's just a matter of you didn't push the wave in, it's against the cart that he's gonna shove it like a baby, right? So, good job having the Udyr come in here when he's clearly pushed up. You guys go ahead and secure this. Save your ult for when Udyr lands this stun basically, right? Or, or, I mean, I can see your logic of you forced him to flash by ulting, or uh, you missed the ult because you hit it after he flashed, but whatever, right? Ideally, if you know Karthus is flash, you wait till you have secured CC on him, then as soon as he's stunned, you immediately ult so he gets pulled back a little further, then if he flashes, it won't matter, you have the damage follow-up to kill him, okay? Really quickly, we're talking about details. Let's say you landed that ult, right, after you just stunned it, the way we would have intended for it to happen. Karthus gets pulled this way, to the bottom left here, okay? Udyr, at that point, you would your position, your position yourself behind Karthus, expecting the flash, right? So that you definitely had positioning to get the guaranteed DPS to kill him. Okay, speed this up a little bit. I'm going to try to get through lane phase here. Get alone by lane, stop kicking butt. Don't miss yes. Okay, so you run. No, you don't. You ward. Okay. So yeah, this is awkward, right? One one thing to think about with mid lane, right, is you should never have downtime unless you're a hyperscaling mid laner, right? If you're a hyperscaling mid laner, just farm and pray, right? But if you've if you're a mid laner and you killed somebody and and uh, you're trying to think of what to do, definitely don't sit here for a bit and then roam top, right? Here's why. Now look, you're roaming top um, to try to kill the GP, okay? He can orange the stun off of Tom Kench, or wait till Tom Kench falls and then flash, okay? And then ult and then run away. You are roaming top right now to make a risky play trying to get a kill here. Now, that's assuming, unless he doesn't have flash. No, he does have flash, okay. A risky play to try to make um, a kill here. It's risky because it's a low chance of success, and what's going to happen here is you didn't push this next wave in, which is a canyon mini wave. Never miss a canyon mini wave ever, okay? So, you didn't push this in. So what's Karthus going to do? Karthus is going to walk in, okay? He's going to shove the hell out of this. Well, okay, he's not shoving as hard as he should be. You guys get the kill. That's awesome, okay? You did a very nice job coming around here at the back. You positioned yourself well to get the CC you needed, okay? It worked out very well for you. That's awesome. Does he still have all? He does still have all, all right? So the thing is, right, he had no vision. A good top laner is going to have vision for mid lane room, especially if their mid laner is pinging Mia. If he was smart, and he got a ward down, and the mid laner actually told him that you were Mia, okay, there's a very good chance that, that wouldn't have worked out. I'm very glad it did, and the fact that it did is awesome, right? And so it's a good thing that you came up here and got this kill. But I'm just saying, more likely outcome would have been you roam up here, you force a flash, which is really good, but you sacrifice a huge amount of gold next to mid to a hyperscaling mid laner. If this was like an early game mid laner, like LeBlanc, and you were like, yo, screw that, man, I'm gonna go top and try to make something else happen instead of leaning against this guy, that's a whole different story. But in this particular case, like, boom, an entire wave is gone, right? Okay, you get a bunch of it, which is awesome. Uh, Ping Mia. Do you have a pink ward yet? Your first back, you should always have a pink ward. Just a FYI, okay? That pink ward, okay, should either go in this bush, this bush, here, or my favorite place is this bush. Ideally, your mid laner puts your pink pink ward there, your jungler gets a pink ward here or here, okay? Now, as a Karthus, he's not the best roaming guy, right? So I would personally put the pink ward here. That way you get more vision of where the jungler is going. You have a slight edge on the dragon, okay? Um... I'd put one here if it was a heavier roaming mid laner because there's a better chance of them going down from a long way. Regardless, you should always have a pink ward. Grabbing a green one ain't so bad either. Oftentimes I'll upgrade my trinket early as well. 
Here, you push. Push. Okay. Udyr is a greedy son of a gun. Um, is he going to Valor? He is going to Valor, okay. If Udyr already had his Devour item, which is possible at 9 minutes, right? If Udyr already had his Devour item, I would have given him blue buff. However, you're Orianna, you need your blue buff, alright? I absolutely would have had you take it in this particular case over Udyr. Okay? Especially since you have a uh, 2 kill advantage in the game. 1 kill advantage, but you have to kill. Okay, so he's not really all in here. Good stuff. So, you up here until you get back. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Again, right? This is ballsy. We're going to talk about that in a minute. If you are low and you have to back like that, it's going to happen. Immediately tell your jungler to rotate mid to cover the lane, even if it's only to get the experience, right? Resource management is really important, okay? Especially in this early game stage. Getting gold onto somebody from the mid lane is always important. So, ideally, either you get it or he gets it, okay? If Karthus forced you out of lane, if you get ganked, you have to leave. You don't want to waste the whole wave on the tower. Make sure Udyr comes and soaks up some XP. This is unfortunate. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say about that. A little too ballsy, even with the tower right there. Karthus hurts, man. Especially when he's had the opportunity to get decent farm. Now, he's not farming that great either. Uh, the fact of the matter is, he's got a lot more than now. Okay. You notice he's sort of oom. You're going all in. This is a good decision from you. Uh, I think if you made this decision knowing how low on mana he was, excellent work. If you were going to do it anyway, no matter what, you're, you're very ballsy, my friend. Um, if he'd had mana, that would have been a very close fight. If you dodge the Qs, you win. If you don't dodge the Qs, you win. Either way, I like that decision. If you had a pink word right here, you'd see MF doing this dragon. Now, I don't know if you guys know they're doing the dragon. Do you have vision on it? No. You probably think they're doing the dragon, right? You probably think they're doing the dragon because, well, we'll see what actually what bot lane sees when I actually go over that lane. Um, but having that pink word there is huge, right? For a variety of reasons. Okay, I don't know why this is minimizing. Sorry about that. Okay. So, vision, 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 my friend. Walk back with Always have a pink on the map. That goes for every player, but it goes especially true for the mid laner, because the mid laner has the most opportunity to get it in the most key positions around the center of the map. I mean, you can mark, make the argument that jungle does as well, yeah, which is somewhat true, but... Uh, yeah, push here, for sure. Okay, so rock the ult you. Right, let's go ahead and speed this up. This is fine. I don't know if you should have rotated bot or not, but it's totally fine. You just push that into the tower. I think I would have done the same thing. Okay. He comes in the lane. What do you have? You have Nisi Lartron and Tyr. He has Tyr Roa. You have double buffs. Still half duration. As soon as he walked in there, you sit on your mini line and you just freaking trade with him. You could literally sit still in, on a minion and just blow your full combo on him, right? And fight him straight up and you win. Period. Right? You just straight up win. If he's not getting isolated Q damage on, you know, obviously it would be better if you dodged his Qs, right? And constantly trade him that way. But dude, you have red buff and powered auto attacks. You have a huge lead, right? You have a needlessly large rod to his Roa. Right? He's freaking... Yeah, he's Roa and Tyr, okay? Yeah, it's Karthus. He does a lot of damage. But, dude, you outdamage the snot out of him right now. You'd be bullying the crap out of him. Okay. Okay, trying to make some aggression happen. It's good. Oh, yeah, dude. He's half HP. You walk up to him. You red buff slow him. You go nuts. Now, here's the thing. I say all that under the assumption that we have some semblance of vision about where Rengar might be, right? Yes, you going aggressive on this card, this is a risk, because Rengar could potentially be ulting onto you, right? That's absolutely true. Pink ward here, pink ward here, negates, the, negates that big time. Plus, do you still have flash? You still have flash. If you see a Rengar exclamation point over your head and you're against a Karthus, you just flash away right away, okay? Um, unless, like, you know, Karthus is way back there, and you think there's potential for you to walk away, then you just walk away, but you flash away. 
because he doesn't have any CC locked down. And if Rengar Blue Ult to try to take you on in mid, that means he's not going to be able to regank effectively, and you just all in card this as soon as Rengar leaves. Vision, vision, vision. You should at very least have a ward in this push and this push, right? And try to bully the crap out of him. Now your buffs are gone, so <laughs> you do more damage to him now. But um, your buffs are gone, so not as far ahead. But dude, the how much HP he has? You should be standing like right here. Like you should be standing like up here. If you know Rengar is in an air, like if you know where Rengar is, right? You are hyper mega aggressive, okay? Now I said initially, I said you should be standing up here, right? You should be standing up here if you know where Rengar is, okay? I changed my mind essentially. If you know you're not getting two manned, right, by the jungler or somebody else, you should be kicking the snot out of this guy. One thing about being good in mid is knowing when to push your limits, right? And going hyper aggressive when you have a small lead is huge. Heck yes, you got him. I love it. You could have done that four minutes ago. Good job making sure the wave pushed it. Back out. Awesome. Let's see roaming top. I don't know how I feel about this roam. Let's really. I'm, I'm trying to think of what your logic was here. I'd be curious to hear why you decided to go top here. I don't know if it was because Udyr asked you to. Um, the only reason I bring it up is yeah, like Udyr's boxing these guys in. If you get there in time to fight it, you can probably. You're, well, not probably. You'll definitely win this 2v2. But the fact of the matter is you walked there from base. It'd be a different thing if you pushed mid out and then went top. Either way, this isn't a bad decision. I guess it's just one I'd like to hear a lot about before I actually this Because, I mean, look, like, you being here allows you to secure the kill. That's, that's really good, right? I don't know if you even needed to be here to do that. And, once again, you're going to lose about two ways. No, you're not going to lose. You're only gonna lose half of one, maybe a f one full wave. Yeah, you lose about one full wave. Now, this, for the record, this card, this is an idiot. All right, you guys should be running up there and killing him immediately, then going for blue. If he's sitting here like this, and you know there's no vision here, right? And if you have a pink here, you know there's no vision. Right? If he's sitting here like this, you guys should have walked straight down the river and kicked his butt. By the way, you're exactly correct for going all in here. There's no reason for him to sit there and fight you. But like, yeah, you could have done that earlier. You could have wrecked his crap far earlier. Okay. Good job, push it in. Sorry, I almost gave myself a seizure there. Alright. Mid lane just changed, right? Laning phase is essentially over. Okay? To some degree. The fact you took mid means your entire role is now different. When you back, which I'm assuming you're about to, you need a pink ward and a green ward or a pink ward and two greens. Okay, no matter what you're building, all right, you need vision. Because at this point, vision's everything for you. One, you might want to push mid constantly and pressure it. Okay. To do that, you're going to need a ward here. You're going to ideally get a ward here. You want a, a pink ward in here, you want a pink ward up in here somewhere, right? If that's if you want to push really hard. Even if you're not pushing really hard, you still want that vision because you want to know, okay, where am I safe to roam? If I have a pink ward in this bush, right, and I haven't seen anybody in this particular area, I can come through here, right, walk down here. I know that no one's come through in this area to ward because I had a pink here. I would have seen them walk in. I can walk straight down here and pressure this lane, right? I can walk straight up the river and pressure this lane. I can just go down and, like, you know, push something else in in general. Anyway, so let's go ahead, shut this up. You're trying to make something happen. Right? This is good. Nice job. I didn't need to ult. Okay, you guys, uh, you should be fighting this. Uh, actually, okay, bot lane lets you know that Nami was coming up. Right, and you have GP here, so complete disengage. Um, you guys already know that. If you want to be really ballsy, there's a small chance you could two v three here. I mean, obviously now you can three v three, but there was a small chance that you could have actually like traded with them there in the river because how strong you are. Um, but this is the correct play to come and go ballsy. Okay, don't miss your spot. All right, so let's talk about the way this fight breaks out. Right, being able to react to this sort of thing is what's going to make you guys a good team. Okay. Because right here, I guarantee all of you are thinking something different, right? Or you're all thinking the same thing and you're way better than I think you are, right? Tom Kench is coming in, right, to the engage. For the record, Tom, I don't, I'm trying to think, what is the range on your ult? Well, whatever, either way, it's pretty good. This spot is fine if you thought they were going to run up a little further. Personally, I would have put it right here, okay? Now, I know it's subtle, like, okay, what's the difference between right here right here? I mean, you can probably see... 
just from the motion I'm making, like, why this spot might be better. It forces these guys to do two things, right? It forces them to either go this way or this way, okay? You putting it here means they can run straight across this way to this opening, which is the most ideal escape route for them, right? If you put it here, they have to run this way or this way. Or they engage on you. You're a tanky son of a gun. All right, you can take it, yeah? In fact, what did you build? I didn't talk about builds this game much. Uh, Oriana. Huh. I don't know how I feel about you. Wait, am I going crazy? Why did I think you had a needlessly large rod earlier? Oh, it's glitched out. It's glitched out. There's an Archangel staff there, but I can't see it on my screen. That's weird. Okay, so whatever. The point is, what are you, th what are you thinking going to this team fight? So, you don't have all. Udyr has no mana. Okay? So, this guy isn't tanky yet. He is no longer a frontline bruiser. All right? Yes, you do have Tom Kench coming in. We got one, one, two, three, four guys. All right? Rengar's dead. It's a 4v5. Despite that, you guys should be relatively careful going into this, okay? They can still win this fight, even with... Okay, who is this? Misfortunes? Moon? Uh, I'm just sitting here thinking about it. Yeah. Now, with the lead you got, you have on, you guys can pretty much man mode this. Purely because Misfortunes, Oom. Um. If Misfortune wasn't Oom, um, there's a chance they could wombo you with the bob bubble and her ult into DP ult. But realistically, I don't think you guys can lose this too hard. It's going to be close... In the sense that, because Udyr is squishy and you don't have ult, there's a chance that you could lose this fight, depending on positioning. But, one thing to keep in mind is Misfortune's right here. So, obviously, an all-in onto her from Twitch is a good idea. Twitch, you can afford to all-in her right here, because, yeah, Nami could bubble you, but you have backup right here, okay? GP's relatively low, so is Soraka giving the health to Udyr and Oriana. They can trade with these two. While you 1v2 these guys, Misfortune doesn't have mana. She can, like, do her thing. Um, if Soraka lands a good silence on one of these two guys, this 2v2 should be completely hand one-handedly. You should be able to fight these guys because of how ahead you are. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking you're ahead. I haven't watched the bot lane yet. Yeah, you're ahead. So you can 2v2v1 2v2 these guys because Misfortune doesn't have mana, um, and you still have heal. No, you don't have heal. Okay, either way. You have flash. You have the ball on you. You can trade with them hard. You trade with these guys, right? If I were you two, I'd blow the snot out of GP, blast him into oblivion, or immediately engage on Misfortune if she doesn't pull back right away. So let's see how this goes. Out. These guys do the obvious thing. They run the heck away, okay? If they hadn't run the heck away, they're idiots and you'd smash them right away. So the, everything changed in that one frame, right? These two start running this way. GP bails. Karthus still kind of wants to fight. This guy's the idiot. If any of you have flash CC, you should be flash CCing him in some way, whether it's Udyr, flash stun, or whatever, right? Soraka can immediately silence him, he doesn't do anything, and then he gets stared in that silence, and he's not going to be able to flash out, and you just blow him up. From there, okay, you have Dragon up in three seconds. You immediately transition to Dragon, okay? Good job blasting him in the blue. You guys should be going hard, yep. There you go. You don't even need to flash him, right? Nami wave is inconsequential. This is fine. This is more than fine. You're zoning very well. You are not going to get killed by these two. Unless you're really far behind, which I don't think you are, right? You're not going to get killed by these two. You can completely zone them out of the fight. As a tanky top laner, this is a, something I'm going to say that I think stands true for most team comps. The mid laner, okay? The mid laner is the guy who wins team fights. All right? The mid laner and the top laner are the guys who win team fights. This guy wins team fights from the back line. This guy wins team fights from the front line. Your jungler is the guy who wins the game. Okay? I'm a jungle main, so I'm biased. But the jungler is the guy who wins the main. He commands all the important stuff in terms of how the game flows. I don't know why it's minimizing. Sorry, guys. In terms of how the game flows and all that variety of stuff. The bot lane... Now, you might as well might find me silly for saying this. The bot lane are the guys who lose the game. Realistically speaking, as long as you guys don't get stomped in lane, all right, your role... Um, transitions easiest out of all the different players okay so you guys right and this is just me as an opinion I don't think this stands true for everybody but you guys as a lane should be trying to win lane but ideally you should be trying not to lose the game for your team because it's very easy for a game to be lost when two out of the five people are super far behind okay mid lane your goal is to scale right do damage in the back line CC people top lane your, da your job is to scale um, CC people do damage and tank in the front line right jungler your job is to win everything because that's you know your thing so, watching how this plays out, you keep zoning, you blow him up, everything's great. Alright, Soraka, you should be peeling backwards right now, away from all these guys. As soon as Karthus died, you know he was going to hit the lowest uh, the lowest HP target, which is going to be you or Twitch, right? 
Your job is just to be in range to heal, okay? You don't actually need to be anywhere near GP to do any of this crap. So, as long as you're in barely in range to heal and you can mid one, auto attack once in a while, you want to avoid getting the card this damage. Now, let's see how this actually plays out. You should have stuck to them. Even if you never get a kill, you guarantee that you, you get them lower, right? You're... Um, ensuring that they're gonna back out for sure. You're ensuring that one of them's probably gonna back because you just did a bunch of damage to them, right? And there's nothing you can really do over here to help this anyway. Right, you being here isn't gonna do it. Okay. So it sucks they got that double. Um, I don't really know what to say about that. You should never die after a skirmish and still have exhaust. You should never die after skirmish and still have exhaust. That goes for most summer spells. With exceptions, obviously. I'm not going to tell you to tell the to play. Right. So, really quick. A few things we could have done better. Tom Kench. Chase them farther. Okay? Understand that you could not have made a change in that fight. Obviously, you turned around because you're like, oh, my back line is low. They're getting pressured. I want to turn around and see if I can like turn that side of the fight around. Maybe didn't realize that they only had one guy left alive, okay? But chasing these two was the better play in that particular position. Unless you were lucky enough to eat either Soraka or Twitch. But if your intention was to turn around and eat one of them, you should have done it immediately, right? Um, to protect them from the card that's all. Anyway, but a, tr a good transition out of that would have been the dragon. Um, now see, Tom, if you chased these two earlier, I think you would have been able to do more damage to them. You don't want to pressure them out. You probably would have pushed them back this way so they didn't even think about re-engaging in that sort of thing, right? And if you did that and forced them to back, you three could have easily dragoned quickly. Let's speed this up to Oh, okay, we're fighting. So, oh! I forgot who here. I teleport. Okay, but well that's cool. Okay, that's good. So you basically did what Tom Kench could have done by himself earlier. Either way, it worked out. That's good. All right, nicely done there. Good job pressuring them out. Now... Obviously, I haven't watched this video before, so this is terrifying. You should be pooping your pants, all right? And we're not really sure what's going to happen here. The truth of the matter is, though, you guys should still win this. You should be positioned in the back of the dragon pit next to Udyr, okay? Purely because you know Rengar is still alive and he still has all, all right? Now, do you have flash? You do not have flash. All right, you just burn in that fight. There's not much you can do here. You're probably about to die. Um, Tom Kench, if you see a big exclamation point and you are standing next to an Oriana who has this much health while you're doing dragon, you should probably eat her. Right? If you want to be a pro, you eat her right when Rengar's jump animation starts so that you get him out of stealth, but Oriana is still fine. Right? Then you hold her in your belly, you auto him twice, cue him to stun him, then spit Oriana, Oriana, Oriana out in a direction that he's not in, and then you guys burst him down. That's the end of that. So, he does the hero thing and goes for the steal. Which is totally fine, right? He had a choice. He's either, okay, I can either go in on Oriana or I can go for the dragon. Personally, if I was him, I would have blown the crap out of Kai. And then tried to clean up in the 3v2, but yeah, that's fine. Job, job, job. Ori, you are not going to be able to do anything bot lane. You have a wave here. You're losing out on again. And it might seem nitpicky to complain about CS at the 17 minute mark, but this... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... This is two thirds of a kill right here worth of gold. Not to mention your tower is taking a ton of damage, right? So little things, little things. Or mid laners, you rotate around the mid lane. Think of it as you're attached to this tower by a bungee cord, right? The farther you get, the tighter it gets, where you're more desired, or you're, your desire to return to your lane should exponentially increase the farther away you get, right? Yes, sometimes it's ideal to stretch yourself out to here, stretch yourself out to here, make things happen, but you ultimately want to always be pulled back here after everything that you do, right? As soon as you end a fight, your thoughts should be, can we take an objective? If not, you go back to mid. Laning phase is officially over, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to backtrack to the beginning of the game. Okay? If this thing loads, it's taking forever, but that's okay. I'm going to backtrack to the beginning of the game, and we're going to take a look at, what did I say I was going to do second? Bot lane. Okay, we're going to talk about bot lane. For the record, um, while this loads, I hope I didn't freeze it up, but while this loads, uh, Kai, Good laning phase, okay? Um, a couple little things. Early on, trade with him with autos and Q while you're in your minion line. If you think you have the mana for it, get second blue. Unless Udyr already has his devour and he's looking to stack it immediately, right? Um, what else is I going to say? When you have that lead in the mid game, you pressure him super hard, 
right? And that's really all I have to say about how that lane went. So there's a couple of minor details, obviously, but it's not a big deal. So my computer's freezing up because I tried to freaking change it in like one second. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to close the lead client and I'm going to restart it with the same thing. And we're going to look at the game again from the beginning from another perspective. Okay. So I have to wait for it to load again, which sucks, but no big deal. So bot lane, let's talk about the matchup. Twitch Soraka. Okay. You guys, uh, I would imagine are playing that lane to scale, not to bully and take a drink. Because, I mean, Soraka is just really good at getting hyper carries to do hyper carry things. And not to mention, uh, Misfortune's more of a lane bully than you. The only thing that makes me curious about bot lane is why they have heal flash on Nami and exhaust flash on Misfortune. That makes me think they forgot to trade. If that's the case, sucks to be them. Um, but yeah, you guys, I mean, I would say you outscale uh, Misfortune Nami. So treating that lane as a scaling lane, I think, is totally fine. If you win this lane, right? Let's say you win this lane as Nami Twitch, or excuse me, as Soraka Twitch. Absolutely not a bad idea to send Twitch mid. Have him invisibility gank mid lane, right? And the nice thing about that is, if Soraka stays bot and farms, like let's say you guys push the push into turret, right? Twitch immediately takes off the run toward mid lane. Okay, let's say you win a fight or they back or whatever. You push the turret, so your minions are at the Welcome turret. Twitch to runs to mid lane, right? Soraka can even stay. Show herself vision-wise in the bot lane, okay? If she has vision here, so she knows Vanguard's not going to kill her, that's fine. She shows herself here. That'll, they'll, unless they have a ward on Twitch moving, they'll never expect him to come in for the gank, right? And obviously Twitch ganks are really scary. He's got his slow, he's invisible. He's got decent burst coming into there, right? So let's look how the bot lane plays out. I'm gonna speed this up. Blah, blah, blah. I already told you guys about the vision. Blah 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 blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, you do grow. I'm not gonna talk about the mechanics of perfectly. So the thing I mentioned earlier. All right. Soraka is so low, so low. Now, you look at this, right? You guys have how much gold? Let's see, how much gold do you have? Twitch has. Wait, where's the gold counter? Twitch has 666 total. Misfortune has 612. Okay? Misfortune is halfway to the next level. You are slightly past halfway to the next level. Okay? Minion lines are comparable. To some degree, you can make the argument that trade is still worth. Alright? Um, because Soraka, if you get through the rough early game in terms of being behind an HP, if you get behind, if you get past that, you know she heals up, you sustain out of it, you still get a small, tiny lead in terms of gold and XP. Personally, I don't think doing Gromp is worth it in this position. But honestly, if I was a jungler, I would leave it up to your guys. Much you, do. you would just have to recognize that if Nami bubbles you right here, you will die if they're level two. Between Misfortune, Slow Wave, and her Q and her autos, you will get wrecked. Also, what if Twitch gets bubbled? Let's say Twitch gets bubbled. Yes, you can heal him. But you're low HP. If you guys get into a fight where he's already down to HP, what happens? He's half HP, you're two-thirds HP, right? They just completed a Sir Dominance over the lane. If I was this Nami and you guys walked in the lane with Soraka being half HP, yo, I, you better believe I'd be bullying the crap out of you, right? So just something to keep in mind. Good job, Mr. R, getting as much poking as you can. If you realize you're standing on a ward and that they're not fight you you're standing on a ward, that's hilarious. Yeah, see, they even hit, they even hit two before you guys. So it's like, crap. I mean, did Gwyn Grob really benefit you anyway? Q there. Yeah, I mean, this is just a matter of, you know Twitch backed off, right? You're probably looking to make an aggressive play on him. I don't know if you knew this was warded or not, but Soraka, parallel or behind Twitch, unless you have a jungler coming, for the most part. Or you know their CC's down. If their CC is down, yeah, you totally walk up, you QM, you auto him, whatever you want to do if you think you can trade him. Otherwise, stay parallel behind Twitch. Um, now, if Twitch was like up here trying to position a trade with him as well, this would actually be a very good time for you guys to trade with them if Twitch was positioned right here because you have minions here in a position to back you up, right? If a fight is extended, you have a cannon minion. You'd have a good two, three seconds of minions potentially punching them in the face, right, while you trade with them. Not to mention poison. So, yeah, fighting right here might have been a good call, but you being this far out when Twitch is back here, it just wasn't going to work out.
Don't miss CS. Don't miss CS. <laughs> Good job boarding that. If you're not right now, you should be chugging potions. Yeah, I know your Q heals you, but if you get caught with another bubble, yeah, like a ballsy misfortune. Flash slow auto Q autos you right there and kills you. Same goes for Nami. If this let's let's say this is a plat level game, right, or a diamond level game, you would absolutely not be alive right now. Not a chance in the world. Not even a little bit. Because they would have blown everything to come kill you. And they would have done it. Even through the Twitch heal. Luckily for you guys, Misfortune is going to run low mana here. Oh, sorry. Really not much to talk about at this point. There's very low chance of jungle pressure, so you don't have to worry about worrying the try. Just keeping ward in lane is all that matters at this point. Good job having vision on her. There you go. Easy heals. Good job there. Recognizing when you get the double heal. <laughs> Three bubbles in a row, man. Either way, this Misfortune is in a position to follow up. You can tell the Nami kind of wants to fight because she lands a bubble and she's like, Misfortune, I'm going to give you my orbs. Go in. And Misfortune is, you know, not that great. Again, a better bot lane here would be taking advantage of these. Big time. <clears throat> this is kind of no fun for me to watch down here because, uh, I mean, it's Soraka Twitch. Like, there's not much you can do early. Your job is the farm. I would argue that Twitch outscales misfortune. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, there's not really much to talk about here. Their positioning at the bot lane is iffy. They could be taking advantage of some of these plays and they're not. Vengar. Good job, Udyr, getting this vision down. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. There you go. Don't waste your cask like that. Don't throw your cask just a poke or trade or whatever, right? Um, definitely hold on to it as a slow in case they engage on you or something like that. <clears throat> or if you're trying to push the wave. If you, if you cast the minion wave to push it, that's fine. Enough. When you have a wave building up like this, where clearly your wave's gonna push into them, right here, you trade hard. So right now, Twitch should not be running this way, he should be running this way, and he should be throwing a cask on both of them right here. You having a cannon mini wave right here pushing into them means even if you miss half your crap, okay, and cancel a lot of auto attack animations and whatever, you're still almost guaranteed to win the fight, okay? Especially if you land a silence on Nami when it matters. You'll get crazy damage from the minions. They're bunched up to get like dual hit by Q, dual hit by silence, right? Dual hit by cask. Okay, everything about this situation right here screams that you should both be running at them immediately. And the reason you could have known that was coming is because your minion waves building up to push would have traded easily for you here, and they're not backing up yet. No, they are like right now. But like if Twitch was literally like here instead of here, he could throw the he could throw the cask on right now. If Soraka was here instead of here, she could drop the Q, she could drop the silence, okay? Yes, they reacted to move away, but just that instant of them not realizing they need to move back beforehand is huge, right? Knowing that your wave is gonna become offensively positioned ahead of when it actually does is the key here. You're welcome. Good try trying to dodge that. They didn't have any follow up anyway. Alright, Oriana, go girl. Okay, you guys still have this. You should recognize this is gonna die soon if you guys have your trinkets. In terms of where to drop your trinkets, sometimes it's a little scary to go past this bush, right? or to face check this push. So ideally you want to walk toward this thing while it's still alive so that you don't wait 30 seconds, then go to ward and Rengar sitting in this bush and one shots you, right? So something to keep in mind in terms of how vision works. Plus like if you left when this wave was big to go ward that and Twitch stayed 
relatively safe, they probably wouldn't fight him because of how many minions there are here, right? If they fought him when there's this many minions on your side, um, they're going to miss some CS, they're going to take a lot of damage from the minions. Like, even now, like, just getting lots of good. Good job getting that ward down right when that river thing dies. That's excellent. Speed this up. Out, out of the bubble. Really, isn't much to talk about here. Yeah, you could like these positioning for offensive stuff, but honestly, you don't need to. They're the land that should be trying to posture for offensive plays, not you guys. There's a smell you can feel. <laughs> hmm. Now, when it comes to this point, if I were you guys, I would go for a trade, right? Like, I would kill the cannon minion first. If you have a cannon wave, you always kill the cannon minion before you fight. Both because you don't want to miss the gold and because it does a lot of damage. You kill the cannon minion, then you trade. The reason for that is you have a mana advantage. So if you notice in lane, like even though your health is super similar, let's say you trade here and you trade evenly. You both burn a quarter of your mana bar or half a mana bar. They burn a half their mana bar, a quarter mana bar, and whatever. The same amount of HP loss. You now have mana for two spells each. They have no mana for anything. And when it comes to Soraka and Twitch, like, well, Soraka getting two heals off and a Q and a silence off, like, dude, that's huge, right? You're going to win every fight after that. That allows you to pressure like a maniac, right? Plus, you have this ward down. Even if Rengar walks up, you'll be able to get away fast enough not to get So, again, just something to keep in mind in terms of how you want to pressure these fights. You kill the cannon minion, you try to trade. And don't throw your cask for no reason. I'm sure there's some easy way for me to only look in bot lane, but whatever. Alright, speeding up. This is boring. So, okay. There you go. Get some pressure on. Now, I wish I knew Twitch as a champion better, so I can give you some advice on like the more like, exact mechanics of how you should be trading. Truth of the matter is, I've only played him like three or four times. I don't know like exactly how to make it work. Good job pressing here. The fact that you don't have mana means you should just be wrecking them, right? But don't miss CS. Yeah, this is good. Pressuring there to push the wave is fine. You could have tried to freeze it. Now, it wouldn't have frozen permanently. It would have pushed it eventually, but you might have been able to deny it. Like, like some more gold. So here comes Rengar. You see him, right? You immediately back off. They, right, they use GP all. So against GP, right, the fact of the matter is, if he has all, right, he hits six, and you don't know where Rengar is, you need a ward here, right, so Scuttle, you need a ward here, so that you can see if Rengar's coming, right, that early, because if there wasn't a GP coming, you could ward here, or, I'm sorry, if there wasn't a GP in the game, you could ward here, because you could escape a Rengar just walking out of the bush right there. But if GP gets the AoE slow on both of you, and Rengar gets this far without you seeing him, this is a tricky situation for you right now. I don't know how this plays out. Let's see how it actually happens. Alright, so... Let's go back. 826, so let's go back to 745 when that thing starts. Right, speed up. Alright, so. You said, alright, so this is what should be going through Soraka's head at this point. We're probably dead. Probably. Okay? There's a few things you could have done, all right, to maybe save Twitch. First of all, I think you did everything you could have done, but let's talk about this. You could wait, right? Q Nami to slow her up because Nami has no mana, right? So the only thing she's going to be doing is auto attacking. You could have told Twitch to all in Nami, right? You could have told Twitch to all in Nami. So you all in Nami, you kill her, you both die, all right? Because you probably would still both die, even if you all in Nami. There's a chance that you trade like one for one, or there's a chance that you kill Misfortune 2 and then you die to Rengar, right? But you could blow her up immediately, right? Especially with the minions being here. So you could blow Nami up. 
You could sprint this way, Q either Nami or Misfortune to slow them. As soon as Rengar jumps in, you drop the silence underneath Twitch, right? Because, I mean, he's going to be trying to run on the Twitch, right? You drop the silence under Twitch so Rengar can't, you know, Q you, whatever. Um, and then you exhaust him, right? Now let's look at what you actually do. I'm going to slow this down where I see what happens. You did a really good job silencing as soon as Rengar got on top of him, right? Obviously, in terms of, like, perfect positioning, you put the silence so that the very edge of the circle is where Twitch is, and the rest of the circle is where he's running to, right? Now, I know you put it, like, right on top of him. This is fine. I'm just saying, in terms of perfection, you put it where he's running to. So he, this Rengar has to run all the way through a full circle, right? At this point, you either exhaust, exhaust Rengar and sack yourself, or... You exhaust Misfortune, and you blow Flash to try to... I don't know, do you have Flash? You have Flash. You exhaust Misfortune, you uh, drop everything you can on Rengar to stop him, and you Flash past him to potentially get out of range of these guys catching you. Um, honestly, another option you guys could have done is if you both had Flash, yeah, you both had Flash, you immediately heal to get the speed up to get through the GP all. As soon as you can, you Flash out of the GP all, right? So, like, when you're, like, right here, you Flash out of the GP all. And honestly, you would have had so much distance between you and their bot lane that I think you could have just peeled back away from Rengar and survived. Regardless of everything I just said, you should be running away. Or you should be all inning exclusively Nami to try to get a kill and then run away. Okay, I don't know what you actually do. So you kind of, you stay to heal. Okay, you try to save her. You get one auto on Nami, you get two autos on Nami. Yeah, you should have left immediately when it was clear Soraka was going to die. You knew you weren't going to kill these guys, right? So, real again, I, I want to I revisit the beginning of this play. Because it's the little details. It's it's reacting to crap like this that makes people, like, really good in terms of how they're going to be in this game. And in this lane especially. So, let's see what happens. Alright. You see him. Okay? Right now, if I were in your shoes, right... I mean, if you're a genius, you're like, okay, GP's probably going to ult us, right? We should be really scared. Right now, you're probably not that scared. You're like, okay, bot lane doesn't have mana or health. We can just walk away. We see him coming. It's not a big deal, right? So we just leave. Um, my thing's going to minimize, I think. But as soon as the GP all comes down, okay, maybe you don't see him because you should absolutely be running right now. Even if, even when the GP all comes down, right, which it hasn't yet, okay? So before I even talk about the GP all, yo. There's no reason you couldn't have just eviscerated this person off the planet right now. You guys could have smashed Nami. She is way out of position, right? And what's Rengar going to do? Flash on top of you? He had a minion wave between him and you. So he can't E to snare you through the minion wave. Unless he's a genius or a really, really good shot or gets lucky, right? You could have blasted her, silence exhausted Rengar, and fought from there, all right? So when you're getting ganked, think of it this way. Do we 2v3 or do we escape? right? Or do we sack the support and let the AD carry escape? Those are essentially your options, right? This is a situation where you should be like, okay, my options are run or fight. If I'm going to fight, who do I blow up first? I blow up the Nami that's right next to me positioned like an idiot. If I'm going to run, I peel the Rengar, okay? <laughs> as soon as this comes down, right, you both flash immediately, okay? You both immediately flash this direction, Lucky for you, Misfortune's a mile and a half away. It's basically still a 2v2. You both immediately flash this direction. As soon as Rengar jumps in, do you have exhaust? As soon as Rengar jumps in, you exhaust him, and you drop um, a silence underneath him in a position so that he has to run through the silence to get to the AD carry. All right? And then obviously you queue something. You can queue Nami or even queue Rengar to just get a slow on something. You should flash it immediately. Don't be scared to blow summoners in a position like this. They blew top lane ult, and they sent... They have three bot to try to kill you, right? Don't think of it as wasting resources. You're not wasting resources. You're trading resources. They blew a ton for you to fight this, right? But you can just get the heck out of it. We're gonna speed up. We know what happened. But you should have ran. I mean, think about that. They just blew car like two alts. Well, more than that. They blew top lane alt, mid lane alt, right? And jungle pressure on you. And they don't even push the freaking wave in, okay? You flashing out of that... Okay? Means they burn a bunch and you burn your flash. And maybe you're here. 
Okay? Now let's goodbye. Vision, my friends. Vision. Vision, vision, vision. Mr. R, what is your build? I wish I had paid attention to if you bought the Fairy Charm before the Ruby Crystal. Um, but finish Sightstone before you finish Nomad's Medallion, if you have the option to. If you back and you have 800, if you have 800 gold or more when you back as Soraka, um, and you haven't bought a Sightstone yet, you are definitely buying a Sightstone no matter what. Absolutely. That goes for pretty much every support. I can't think of one that is, a, I can't think of an exception to that rule. Oh, I'd like to watch my bot. So look. What's the farm? 67 to 35? Holy crap. Who gives a crap that you just died? You have 67, you have a freaking Bilgewater Cutlass against her Berserker Griefs. All right, go kick their butts. At this point, if you come back with a lead this big ever, you immediately fight their butts and save Silence to drop a misfortune when she's all when she alts, right? You immediately fight, right? You save Silence, you alt, you Silence misfortune when she alts, you smash them, right? Even if you don't have ult as Twitch, you just fight them anyway. When you guys got back to lane, now I didn't pay attention because I'm bad, but if they were up on the minion line when you guys came back to lane, I would have sent Soraka in and then had Twitch Q in and immediately engage as soon as he exits stealth. Okay? Speed this up. In your shoes here, I might have assumed they backed. Just because they're idiots, right? A good player wouldn't leave the lane in this position unless they were doing dragon, right? They wouldn't back in this situation, but these guys I don't know about. So, you should be thinking dragon, but considering how dumb they are, there is a chance they back here. Regardless, one of you should be walking over here towards this, so you know for sure. Soraka does go to ward, but don't give up. Yeah, this sucks. A lot. Burn flash immediately to get out of that position, if you can, right? Soraka immediately flash out. Do you have ult? Oh, wow. It's coming up in like one second, it looks like. So, you flash out right, of the GPL as quickly as you can. You guys, nice job. See? See, I didn't watch this replay. I didn't know you did it. Yet, so, you did a good job. Uh, Twitch, you should have started your Q animation as soon as possible. I don't know how that misfortune did not finish her all. That's awkward. Um, I don't really think there's much else you could have done there. You died with exhaust. Never die with exhaust as a support after skirmish. Oh. Hey, you dear. Good job. Don't die. Yeah, too ballsy. Especially since Twitch had a big mini wave to take care of there. But either way, good job picking up a kill. Uh, Ryan. If your intention was to stay here, kill this wave immediately back. Focus in all your efforts on killing that wave and then backing immediately. Don't hit the tower. Getting damage on that tower this early in the game is really short. Oh, excuse me. Let's rock again. Vision, good job. Oh, this is tricky. Somebody pinged Rengar. I don't know. Either way, don't go deep in their jungle if you know you have no help. They had the scuttle. Or if they just got the scuttle, whatever. Point is, you didn't know where Rengar was. Don't deep ward their jungle if you don't know where their jungler is. Unless you have help. Like, if, if you have your jungler come with you, absolutely go do it. But in this case, you just you didn't have the vision to do that. Two balls here. Okay. Laning phase will be over here in a moment. So, Twitch, yeah, there's not much to talk about here, and then just keep on the rock and <laughs> Nice little cast, I guess. Killing spree. Meanwhile, Kai carries. Alright. Alright, let's look. You have 99 farm. You have a kill. You have a Blade of the Ruin King. She's 103. Good for her. She had Berserker Grease and a Vampire Acceptor. Take your freaking arrows and do dirty things to them. 
You guys should absolutely crush them in a 2v2. Like, not even remotely, sort of, kind of close. You gotta recognize when there's a huge gold discrepancy, okay? You gotta take every little advantage you have and utilize it to the fullest. I realize you guys just got, like, gangbanged by Rengar, like, twice in a row, and you had GP all you, and that sucks. You're not that far behind. You have an 0-3 Soraka. That sucks. She still heals for a billion HP every two seconds. Okay? She's still going to be great. As long as she's not getting blown up by the bot lane, you guys will win fights because Twitch has way more gold than their AD carry does. And you have the benefit of having a ward right here. And, yeah, you died for it, but you have a ward up here too. You know Rengar isn't anywhere in this vicinity. Yes, he could be ulting in from behind. Okay, he could be doing that. But considering where you are in the lane, there's no reason you can't be being aggressive here. Kick their ass. Seriously, get in there and destroy them. That is all I have to say about the next few minutes. You should be smashing their faces in. That's it. There you go. There you go. Oh, of course it goes to another freaking thing. Right when that happens. Okay, yeah. Forgive me, I'm gonna back up. I hate the spectator thing sometimes. Okay, so let's look at you going in to smash them. Alright. So I'm gonna slow this down. Alright, I'm assuming you told her you're about to do this. That's good. Yep, this is good. Now let's look at the actual fight, how it ends up working out. Alright, so Rock gets the heals. They don't know Twitch is here. Twitch pops out of stealth. Good job of trying to kite back. Immediately kite sideways. Oh my god, are you serious right now? Sorry. You guys immediately want to go up. When Misfortune ults, you immediately go up. Also, Mr. R, the silence was good. But one thing you have to recognize is that that silence is going to make or break you in these fights because being able to stop her ultimate with that is pretty much a game changer. So you save the silence until she ults. Unless you want to exhaust her. You could do that too. As soon as she starts ulting, you exhaust her. But the silence is the better play. I mean, you guys get, you get double CC'd by the Nami ult. Um, and you eat the Misfortune ult. So it looks like that was close, but it, it didn't need to be. The other thing is they fought you guys when they had this minion wave coming in here. Okay? Remember how I mentioned earlier you want to pick a fight when your mini wave's about to push in and then big time? Well, that's kind of what happened to you guys here, right? That's what you want to happen in your favor in other team. scenarios. Okay. There really isn't much to talk about at this point. So now... Now you've officially one lane hard, right? This lane is over. You take the turret, you roam, you kill uh, Oriana. And I wish I'd been paying attention to my own thoughts earlier. Um, I think after you guys got that kill and you healed up a little bit, you push super hard, you roam mid, all right? Or you push super hard, take the tower, then roam mid and kill mid tower, which is what you should be doing right now. Focus down the tower as fast as you can. I didn't even notice the GP was coming. So let's back the heck up and watch what happens here. Waiting for GP to TP. I'm assuming that's what happens. Yep, so here you come. Okay. So, I mean, really, this guy's been Mia for forever. Um, honestly, this happens to me all the time when I play support and AD carry. I forget there's a good chance of the guy coming in. But when it boils down to it, you just gotta pay attention for this big animation because if you notice this, and you're this far away from their bot lane, you can run away before they kill, before they catch up in time. 
When he came out of nowhere and barreled you, you just accept the fact you're dead and do everything you can to help him get away. That's fine. Hi. That turret should be going down. Like, not right now, obviously, but like immediately you should be thinking about killing that turret, Tom. Okay, speeding up, speeding up. Yep, just don't die while they push it in. Okay, so at this point, this is nearing... Yeah, this is nearing that skirmish that happens in the jungle. Okay, so... I've already talked about this. Good job following bot lane, okay? So many AD carries in solo queue would just keep pushing this lane and be like, Oh, these guys can deal with this themselves. I don't give a crap. Right, no. Good job coming up. Same with Soraka. Good job responding to that, okay? Uh, definitely, obviously, good job queuing in to get the burst of damage once you get there. Let's slow this down. I'll specifically talk about what should be going on in your mind at this point. I already talked a little earlier, but let's let's discuss this. So, this is iffy, right? This is, of course, iffy because, you know, you've got three guys all of relatively high mana. You've got an, an Um Udir. You've got an Orianna who's fed as heck, though. And you're full HP, full mana. So, as long as you don't get burst and Orianna doesn't get burst, right, you can definitely win this fight, especially since Soraka's close. You want to be calling for Tom Kench to ult in behind them. As soon as he starts ulting, that's when you fight. This is ballsy. <laughs> if you if the if you guys are on the same page and they were pulling back just for you to get a small engage on so they could return to damage, if if they knew you were gonna do this, great. <laughs> if they didn't, this is just you being a little wild here because this guy hits pretty dang hard, dude. Like if Nami had bubbled you and he all into you and Karthus followed up, this would have been really hard for you to handle. Like if GP had turned to fight you and Nami bubbled you in a better position, it would have been rough. Good job, Tom Kench coming in. Good job changing targets and not chasing here. Obviously these are the guys you should be shooting and you do a good job turning them. So you've got options here, right? Honestly, something to keep I always try to keep in mind is when Karthus dies, alright, you've secured a lead in the fight. You give that lead away by staying close to the dead Karthus. There's no reason you couldn't just run away from the GP here. You're standing in a barrel, you're standing in Karthus, right? Yes, it's a 4v1. But there's no need to fight in this position when you can just back off, right? You already had an advantage, you back off, you do dragon. Right? Or you rotate to fight the bot laners down here. I mean, look at this damage. Boom. Alright, well that was dramatic. But yeah, I don't really need to say much else about that. And then you transition in mid-game fights. Okay? So I'm going to back up to the beginning again. Hopefully it doesn't freeze. And we're going to talk about uh, top lane next. Okay? Now, top lane, I'll probably go through um, pretty slowly. Or, not slowly. I'll probably go through pretty fast, honestly. It looks like I have to actually reboot this whole thing. I keep trying to make it do a billion things at once. Um, I'm going to reboot it. Top lane, I'm going to go through very quickly because um, it's probably my weakest lane outside of bot lane. I'm not a very good AD carry, but I'm a pretty good support. I'm not a huge knowledge base sort of guy in terms of Tom Kench either, so I'm not going to be able to give you too much advice there. Anyway, either way, so Tom Kench. It's Tom Kench against Gangplank. He outscales you, dude. Um, honestly, that's kind of a crappy matchup. Gangplank, you should ban him every game. Uh, he's ridiculous right now. Like, absolutely absurd. He is a huge game changer, and in my opinion, this is the sort of lane where it would be really difficult for you to win, because even if you like win lane by a little bit, Gangplank outscales you. So it's just like, oh man, like, if I'm you going into this, I'm a little, I'm, I'm not, I'm just a little worried, right? I'm just a little worried because I've got a lot when I need to try to do to win lane, and even if I do, it's like, I don't even know if it's going to make a few difference. You guys showing off, it's nice to see, blah, 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 okay, so speed this bad boy up. We go to lane, okay. Tom Kench. He drops a barrel, you wait until it's at two ticks and about to turn to one tick. You start your auto attack animation, you hit it before he can hit it. That's the whole goal of like getting an advantage in this lane. Oh, 
Please stay on time, Kench. Alright. I mean, honestly, like... You can't trade with him. He does true damage. Okay? I don't know the new GP well enough to know what his weak points are. You can't trade with him. All you can do is farm. Don't die. Right? Try to make teleport plays. Or alt mid to try to make a play there. And scale. And hope that he doesn't scale too hard. Yeah? If you are going to trade with him like that, you want to wait till you get one auto attack on him and then Q auto. Yeah? To get this, or you can auto auto Q to get the stun. I Personally, I would prefer if you went auto Q auto um, and then aid him for big damage. Okay, so ballsy here, but if I were you and you were confident, I'd walk up, wait until this was at two ticks, and start your auto attack animation right before it exploded so you cancel out the explosion. That prevents him from pushing and it allows you um, to get a little more dominance. But there is a chance of you taking extra poke. Yeah, holy crap. I really don't have much commentary I can say on this part, other than farm as best you can, try to deny his barrels. I mean, that's that's really all about down to Okay, so you're low. Chug your potions. Just click that. When a gank's coming, do everything you can not to give it away. Right? So you don't want to be completely blatant about, hey, I'm going really aggressive on you because obviously my mid laner is here, right? So, I'm going to back up even further because I would really like to get some insight into how this goes. Okay. He's got the advantage, but you got the mana. Here comes Udyr. So at this point, right, Normally, if you were even in HP, I'd say go up and trade with him, right? Um, but unfortunately, like, if I were you, I'd in this scenario, I'd probably be trying to kill the cannon minion before Udyr gets here. Like, try to kill the cannon minion. And if he comes up to fight you, auto, Q, auto, swallow, and walk back toward your turret with him. And then when Udyr gets in, he pops out, Udyr stuns him, we're good to go. I mean, I, I want to say you weren't in a position to help the Udyr here, but realistically speaking, it would have been tough for you to do that. I guess if I had to criticize anything, it would be get up close enough to where you can at least land the Q slow when Udyr comes in. Because there's a very low chance of you getting the kill here unless you went all in to get the Swallow when he was back here, right? So if you don't know there's a ward here and Udyr's at like this point right here, that's when you want to start trading. Since you were low on HP, it would have been pretty risky for you to trade there. But if you guys really wanted to get the kill, that's what you should have done. Oh dear. After that gank and GP backs, you push the wave with Tom Kench. Um, if you don't know, the reason you do that is even though, yes, you're taking some XP and some gold from Tom, right? You get some of his farm. But here's the thing. He cannot push this any faster than he is, or not much faster than he is. So now what's going to happen? GP's back here. He's got well, he's got a lead, right? He's got more HP, more mana. He just bought. And Tom's not going to be able to fight him, right? He's not going to fight him. All he has is a freaking potion. Like, that's it. So what's he going to do? He's going he's gonna to ward. He's going to walk up here, and he's going to try to do something to get some farm right. So he's going to, like, he's going to let his lane push in, which is great. But if this GP wanted to be aggressive on him, he could, right? He could. And Tom Kench is a big mini disadvantage, right? And, it, and if if I were him, I would have backed with you, or I would have pushed with you and then backed, right? Okay. So yeah, uh, this is this is rough. Okay, thank God, thank God that Rengar missed his thing. Good job not getting too far up, knowing that Rengar could potentially slip you. But yeah, you, you should be looking at back here. Regrettably, I must retire in order to find a digest. If I were you there, I wouldn't have TP'd. If GP isn't pushing into your tower, there's no reason to TP. You walk up. The only reason you TP back to lean is if 
uh, he's pushing it in your tower, and you're going to miss a significant number of minions and XP by not TPing back in the lane. You want to save that summer spell as best you can. Even if you're going to miss a couple by not TPing. Good job there. Uh, I'm just going to say good job. Uh... Okay, so interesting that you rode mid. Once you hit level 6, in this lane, in this matchup against GP, you want to immediately try to use your alt here, okay, to roam mid. If you're not planning on using your alt to roam, use it to get back to lane instead of your TP, and then use your TP to make a play in another lane. Yeah, you just gotta farm. Which sucks, please. There really isn't much else to talk about in the top lane. Yeah, right there. If you land the Q slot on him, since you were in your mini line and he was a little far up, definitely could have traded with him, right? Q, or uh, auto, Q, auto, swallow. If you're looking just to get the stun and then leave him, you would. Uh, auto auto Q and then auto and then walk away but if you're looking to get the swallow as part of your combo you would do auto Q auto and then swallow the reason is it's just faster that's the only reason All right. yeah, it's, it's just tough to trade with GP at that point or any point really in the mid to early game okay, or anywhere for top catch but then again I don't really think all right, so something to keep in mind, right, is you used teleport early to get back in the lane. You could have used all, right, or walked up. There's a very good chance you could have TP'd into this, right? Like if they had known that was happening and dropped the ward somewhere, or you could have TP'd to this ward. You could have TP'd into that whole fight and potentially swapped it, right? You could have changed the way that ended up working out. Save your TP if you can. You only have to use it to get back to lane if you're going to miss a huge number of minions by not using it. Use your ult to do it. Yeah, I mean, so do you have TP off cooldown? You do have TP off cooldown. So, you're not going to be able to, I mean, part of me wants you to TP to try to save Soraka, but realistically speaking, not going to happen. But if your TP's off cooldown and you're in the top lane, always look for a fight, alright? If Dragon's coming up soon, you are absolutely going to want to gain, like, join that fight. Now, the Dragon timer, it's not up for, I don't even know when the, where the Dragon is. Oh, excuse my yawn. But, um, when the Dragon spawns, alright, and you're Tom Kench in the top lane, you push the wave in. You walk down toward the dragon pit for the dragon fight, right? They start doing dragon when you're, like, right here. If the fight breaks out, you ult into it, okay? Otherwise, you just keep walking toward dragon, all right? Let's say they finish dragon and nothing bad happened. They let them do it. You walk back up toward top lane. By then, GP would have pushed it to your tower, probably, and you just ult back in the lane, and you stay there. And you still have teleport if something else crazy happens. Right, so you are someone who has multiple means to make an influence across the map. And you, this isn't criticism, it's just how it is. You haven't been able to do that this week. You haven't been able to use your kit and your summoner spell to make an influence across the map. All the time. So it's not about winning lane for you, it's about winning other lanes for them. Earlier I said top lane and mid lane are about winning team fights. Your job is making other lanes win. Specifically bot lane. Honestly. And getting dragons for cool. You're kind of like a pseudo jungler that way. Alright, so we're approaching the point in the game. Skirmish breaks out. Alright, so... It's a shame this happened. Something I didn't mention about the bot lane that I should have mentioned. Something I didn't mention about the top lane that I should have mentioned. No pinks. None. No pinks. No pinks here. No pinks anywhere. 
this isn't a top lane, bot lane, anything sort of thing. There's zero pink wards on the map. Now, that would be excusable in games, I suppose, if you're buying greens, right? Or we'll just say, hey, like, we didn't need the vision, we were ahead, whatever, right? That would be excusable in a scenario like that. But you're against Rengar. Besides Evelyn, he's the one you need pink wards against the most, right? You need pink wards. You need a pink ward here. It's 100 gold, very well spent, right? Very well spent. What a save, man. I like this. I like that you're getting ballsy. All right. I like that. I know earlier I talked about whether or not I liked this room. The fact that Karthus wasn't mid to push this wave in, and means that this room's gonna work out. But realistically speaking, I don't think I, I still don't think I support this room. I think you would have been better off going mid because yes, you get a you get assist by going up here. But just roaming this way rarely works out for the mid lane. It does here, but it rarely works out. Nice to rock all, by the way. This is a bad, bad, bad teleport. You have no minions to collect by teleporting there. There's no reason for you to TP to this lane when these guys are already here. Okay? You could have just walked up there, saved your TP, made a play later. Okay? Especially since dragons, but I, well, I don't, I don't, am I an idiot? Like, I can't see the dragon timer. I don't know where it is, but the point is, you could have saved that teleport for a later play. Don't use it. Okay? Alright, I'm just going to fast forward a little bit. Yes. Good job, Oriana. Okay. GP teleport spot lane. If you have teleport, you follow. It's a three. It's a three v three. Okay. Huge, huge difference between how this worked out and how it could have played out. Right. So, good job pushing them. You know, you're like, all right, GP, you teleport. I gotta push the wave. You use all to stop. Them. All right. Dominating. Good job rotating down, and the fight's happening, all right? If a fight's going to break out around Dragon Pen, it's about to start, and it's going to be a relatively close fight, you absolutely should rotate down. If anything, maybe you could have rotated down a little faster, but hey, you knew what you had to do, right? I already talked about what you could have done in this play a little better. I would have pressured these guys more. You coming back this way is not going to help anything over here, unless you were looking to swallow Twitch, okay? At which point, go for it, right? If you were looking to swallow Twitch and he flashed away from you, that's hilarious. Better communication next time. I'm gonna save it. Laning phase is now over. So, I am gonna, hold on, jump back 15 seconds. Now, can I jump back all the way to the beginning without... Can I jump back all the way to the beginning? No, I don't think it's gonna let me. I think it's gonna lag out. But I'd rather do it this way than... Man, I really wish there was an easy way to restart. I'm gonna do it bit by bit so it doesn't completely crash, hopefully. Okay. Alright, perfect. Alright. Time for my boy, the jungle. Last but not least. Uh, I don't play Udyr. But I played with and against a lot of Udyrs. I know how he works. If you're going Devour, good for you. Let's see how this plays out. So, your first clear. I'm not gonna, I don't have a common space. Alright. You do your thing. Hmm. I had a random thought there. Um, good job getting this scuttle. I think, ideally, okay, so what do you buy when you back? You get, all right, so you get Stalker's Blade. If you're going Devourer on Udyr, I don't know if you've tried it yet, but try Trailblazer just to see which you like better. If you're doing more of a gank-happy Udyr, um, Stalker's Blade, yeah, that's what you want to get. Um, but the thing is, if you get Trailblazer, you'll get Devourer a lot faster. 
And if you get the other jungle item, the duelist one, I, I should know what it is, but I don't remember what it's called. If you get the duelist one, that's going to allow you to 1v1 uh, Rengar late game. It's going to allow you to 1v1 Misfortune late game. It probably won't let you 1v1 Gangplank because Gangplank's broken, but the, the duelist item, um, the red one, is going to be really nice for you. So this isn't saying the Stalker's Blade purchase is wrong. Absolutely not. I think it's very good, especially if it's something you're used to playing with. But try the other two. And if the enemy team comp is built around uh, assassins um, or split pushers, you definitely want to pick up the duelist one because then you'll be able to counter split push against them and win those fights. Now, okay. You gank. You gank. We saw that earlier. You do what you can, all right? There really wasn't much else you could have done. Honestly, I wouldn't be ganking this lane. Um, unless it was really blatantly pushed up. There's only so much you can do. You should be focusing everything on killing this idiot right here. Okay? He's been pushing up all game, right? You have a guaranteed stun on him. And you can walk up to him. This is the guy you want to be ganking a lot. And that goes for every card this ever. Okay, something to keep in mind. Still, good attempt in the top lane. Back. Scuttle. Yeah. As soon as he walked up, you leave. You, you leave that scuttle crab to him. Seriously, he he has now established dominance in the scuttle crab. You are not going to get it. You had mana. Walk up. Do grump. Do wolves. Do wraiths. Do krugs. Back. And you got a better purchase now. He kicks your butt, right? And you're forced to back with way less. Because, I mean, like, you, you, don't, you don't really have much of it. Yeah, you have to back. You could have gotten a much more clearing. Who cares about getting maximum gold possible in the early game, right? You want to clear as much as you can. This is why I like Trailblazer on you so much. So here you go. Okay, you're just going to farm it up, which is totally fine. You're a little bit behind, so... Yes! Oh, my God. This should have happened multiple times already. Just... Oh my god, like, I, I cannot tell you enough how happy it is to, to, how happy it makes me to see a jungle camp the snot out of a card that she keeps pushing. Because even if you kill him once, right, you gank him twice, you kill him once, you blow flash once, you come back and kill him once. The psychological effect it will have on him to have you gank him twice back to back will be huge. He will no longer pressure this land at all, he will be not, he will not be comfortable moving up to the tower to farm there, right, he will miss a lot of gold. It gives Ori an opportunity to make balls of your place, right? And it leaves you open to go to the lanes knowing you already secured a mid uh, mid lane advantage, right? So good job here. You walk in, you bop him. Good job moving up to make sure you have a good position to auto attack him next. Nice one. If Ori, again, okay. ideally Ori ults, or Ori balls you. You walk up, you stun him, she immediately ults. It pulls him to the bottom left, then you walk a little bit top right to position yourself where you can still hit him even if he flashes. Yeah? Good stuff, guys. Now you go clear some more. You're actually a bit behind. Runes and Masters are something I want to talk about. Unfortunately, I'm not... I don't really have enough information well organized in front of me to talk about your runes and masteries, but something tells me you're running more aggressive ones, or I think you're running the same ones. Either way, whatever. So, fight breaks out. You're going to, This blue should definitely be going to Oriana. I know I mentioned that earlier. Uh, the blue should be going to Oriana. Unless you already had your Devour on. Oh, if I didn't explain already, you should be giving her the blue and not to yourself because. If you had the Devour item and you were going to try to stack it crazy fast, uh, great. Take blue, go farm everything, uh, kill all the Scuttle Crabs, invade his jungle, like, go wild. Blue buff lets you be super flexible as Udyr. But if you're behind, you don't have the Scuttle Crab. Well, you're not behind, you're just not ahead. If you don't have the, if you don't have the Scuttle Crabs, uh, if you don't have um, the Devour to, like, get you a bunch of stacks, give it to Ori. She's fed. Um, Oriana would be up to amazing anyway, right? One thing I like to do with Udyr is, or any melee jungle rank, like Shivana, who doesn't have like a uh, big time gap closer or lockdown CC, is as soon as you get red buff, immediately look for a gank, right? Like, 
most junglers I play and anybody play they should think this way where if you get a red buff you should immediately look to see like okay what can I gank because you'd be very surprised how big of a difference having that buff actually makes right it lets you ap apply a lot of pressure on a lot of different champions especially someone like Karthus now if he doesn't have flash and you get a red buff slow on him he's not going anywhere right same thing with Misfortune I mean Nami eh sort of she's kind of speedy but again look to gank as soon as you get a red buff which you do you're like, okay, this Karthus is going down. You're half HP, he's half mana, full HP. He's got minions, you don't, right? This is you being a aggressive, crazy man. Now, as soon as that first Q hits, and it does that much damage, you should be like, oh crap, I've made mistakes in life. It's time for me to leave, right? Which, you don't. You stop to, to hit him again. No, just leave, buddy. Just get the heck out of there. That sucks. And that sucks because we've all done that before. I'm going to go hit this mid laner. Oh, he does a lot more damage than me because he was mid, right? Um, at the very least, you should not have been in a spot where he could isolate Q you. Okay? Either way, buddy. Don't, don't you worry. You're doing fine. At this point, Udir, you are 1-1 one one with 32 CS. Rengar is 101 with 28 CS. He has Devour. Okay. For the record, never get a Devour on a Rengar ever. Okay, can we all just agree never to do that? That's horrible. Don't ever do that, okay? You're getting your Devour. Do you have enough gold to get your Devour? You do not, it looks like. No, you get... Oh, no, you do. Okay, so you got your Devour. At this point, they get Dragon, okay? Uh, bot lane is even... Or, actually, bot lane's way ahead. Top lane's even. Mid lane's way ahead. You guys don't necessarily outscale, but the thing is, you're not going to make a huge impact no matter what you do right now. If you had Cinderhawk, yes. If you had Cinderhawk, you'd try to make some plays. you try to get in people's faces. you try to make some aggressive plays early. You have a Devourer. You're squishy, right? There's only so much you can do in skirmishes. This is where you power farm. You bought that item, you go power farm immediately, right? You focus on prioritizing Scuttles because they give you two stacks. Most of the time is Udyr or Shivana or somebody who can do this, as soon as you get Devour, you should be looking to Dragon immediately, right? Now, you got bad you got bad luck here, and they got the Dragon right away, but if you get Devour, as soon as you buy it, you're looking to Dragon. Either if you're soloing it, if you're asking your bot lane to help you do it, I would prefer if you soloed it, you buy a pink ward, you pink Dragon Pit, you do it, you leave, you have five stacks already. That's crazy. Like, that's five camps. That's five Wraith camps worth of stacks right there, just from doing Dragon that early. Now, Something I want to criticize you for. No wars bought by you this whole game. None, all right? You haven't bought it. And if you did buy one and I missed it, my bad. But you haven't bought a single ward, and that is by far the biggest mistake lower level players make is not picking up wards, even if it's just making sure there are five pink wards in the map, all right? Even if you're just making sure you have five pink wards in the map, that alone is better than 90-some percent of players below diamond, okay? Seriously. And it makes such a huge difference, like so huge. So even if you're just buying a pink ward right now, with the thought of potentially soloing dragon, that's something you should be doing. And I mentioned earlier how having vision is really going to be good. I'm an idiot and totally forgot this happened. Alright, I'm going to back up. Okay, so you're farming, you're farming. Man, I forgot you had teleport. So, I, I mean, I don't really need to say it, but I think there were at least two opportunities in the bot lane where you could have teleported in behind their laners to make a play, and you didn't. Um, and it might have been because you were low, right? I, I wasn't paying attention to when those events happened in relation to where you were, right? But something to keep in mind, absolutely... There was um, a couple opportunities where you could have TP'd in behind and made plays. And in general, bot lane should have been dropping a lot of wards in this bush, trying to get Tom Kench or you to TP in behind them. That's something this team should have prioritized more. Like That's something you guys should have prioritized more, is making sure you had vision in this bush so that you could get TPs in to counter-engage their aggressive plays. Even if you're double teleporting into the bot lane, that's great. Getting double teleports into this bush, right? Let's say if Rengar ganks, you get four people 
just jumping on top of those three. You clean house. There's only two people in their team left alive. You do dragon. You're doing great. And the best part about that is you can alt back to top lane so that you don't miss out on a lot of farm by doing that, okay? That's you talking about. I don't think I need to say anything to you here. You go too aggressive, right? No need to try to dive her there. You knew you were low. Devourer Udir can't make really aggressive plays early. He just can't because he's so much squishier than people expect him to be, right? So at the end of the day, you should be power farming at this point, unless you win Cinderhall, right? Something to keep in mind. So what do we do now? What do you do now? So now, now you really got to power farm. If you're going to Devour, you have to power farm a lot. Scuttle. Prioritize Scuttle. Oh my god, I get so mad at this thing sometimes. Okay. Prioritize Scuttle. Good job trying to get some stacks on his farm as well. Oh, that's cool. I would have cleared your bot jungle before backing that person. Okay. Good job. You notice the barrels, you know they're low. There's no need to run through the barrels. You can just walk right around, right? You finished your glacial shroud. These guys are gonna do significantly less damage to you, and you know Orianna's Orion on the way, so you don't have to go crazy ham yet. You just need to zone until she gets there. Okay? Great job. Seriously, like, admittedly, you being here says I only care about killing one of them because technically GP could just run out here and survive probably. So by you doing this, it's saying, like, oh, I only want to kill one of them. And that's okay, really. Like, yes, getting both of them would be great. But honestly, positioning yourself right in this bush means that Rengar cannot run away from you. It allows you to do this. Thank you, Soraka. Right? Good job running away. Here's something you could have done. Sit on the barrel, as soon as it hits two ticks and is about to hit one tick, you auto it to cancel the explosion before GP can hit it. I mean, I don't really need to say anything else about this game. Just get the business. There you go. And then, do blue buff. Give it to Oriana. So earlier I said you guys should have walked down and immediately killed this Karthus together. I take that back. I think you're full mana and you're fed. You just go kill him yourself. Just go 1v1 him. Udyr does blue buff. I'm saying he gets this blue buff because he needs a devour stacks. So he's going to power farm for the next couple minutes. Stack that bad boy up. Right? Only fight when he has to. And then hopefully you just 1v1 Karthus. And you do it anyway, so you could have done it earlier. Knowing when to give boob up to jungler and when to give it to melee is kind of hard, obviously. But if you're going to devour, you need to get stacks, like, so bad. You become so useless if you don't get him. Scuttle. Yep. I've already talked about this fight extensively. I'm not kidding. You're smart for keeping your distance, right? You have no mana, you've red buff, you're half HP, you're not tanky yet. You're smart for keeping your distance. Again, at this point, right? I've already, again, I've already talked about what we should be thinking. If you know they're positioned over here and they're walking away, run up, stun the Nami, and then run this way. Because if you run up to stun the Nami, chances are Misfortune and Nami both do a bunch of damage to you and you're very low. So you run this way, you escape, okay? You immediately, well, I would say you immediately back, but I would, if I were you, I'd hang around, right? Save mana for shield, okay? You're probably not going to be able to re-enter the fight. I would probably just back as soon as you're low in that case. You running up and stunning Nami secures her as a kill for everybody else, and it allows you to do something useful, despite the fact that you're oom um and uh, low on health. Yeah, you can't fight these two. So, unless you had backup. This is good, though. Like... You had three people here backing you up. Obviously, you had the position where you can be in this back. But as soon as you killed him, run this way, hit GP, and then keep running. Right? Which seems silly, but like, Karthus isn't going to shred you, right? Karthus is going to shred you. Well, 
what I just said only stands true if he actually hits you, right? So he decided to go for the bot lane instead. It worked out. What you did was absolutely fine. Good job. And then push mid. Good job backing and teleporting in. Being ballsy and doing this with zero HP would have been dumb. You did the smart thing, you backed, you got your HP back, you go back to new drag. And then you win a fight there as well. Admittedly, I would have pushed out mid lane before doing that, because there's going to be a big wave here hitting the tower without anybody picking it up. Which makes a huge difference. Good job getting the dragon. I really don't have much else to say about that. Um, yeah. You don't have flash, right? No, you don't have flash. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, she's an idiot. You made a good play actually moving up to fight that. Nicely job. Nicely done. Um, at this point, you guys hopefully push that tower and then kill it. Because that's what you should be doing as a, as a group. Okay, yeah. Mistake. Mistake. You got Dragon, you killed him. This thing's like 10 HP. Push the wave in, all three of you, kill it, then leave. That's what you should be doing. I disagree with you going into their jungle here. I take that back. No, I don't. The only reason you're okay doing it is because you can see GP, you can see Karthus, two of them are dead, and Nami ain't gonna do crap to you. So you're correct in doing that. But always know where people are before you move into the jungle, especially as Udyr when you're low in demand on HP like that. Right. This is the first time I'm watching the game past this point, so I'm going to play at a normal speed, I'm going to watch what happens. And I'm just going to try to analyze team fights and whatnot. Vision. There's a pink ward. Who's it belong to? Soraka. Are there any red trinkets on the team? There's one. It's on Soraka. At the 18 minute mark, these should mostly be upgraded. Most of the time, these should be upgraded by now. Okay? Um, that's really all I have to say about that. Especially on Udyr. Udyr, you gotta have a red trinket by now, buddy. But yeah, that's it. And you should have a blue trinket by now, um, Ryan. Blue trinket's pretty key. Good job. Karthus was in a bad position. You roam in, you kill him. Not much to say about that. I don't know what these guys are doing. If you guys see this happening, okay, you have two options. One, you roam back and try to kill them and sack the, and yeah, you may potentially kill them, right? Which is good. The better option, in my opinion, is you three-man push mid and force this tower down and let them do whatever it is they want to do. The downside to you pushing mid is if you make the call to do that, to push this tower as soon as you see these guys, you have to immediately tell Tom Kench to be prepared to ult in for the fight. Because there's a chance that these guys rotate up, and then these guys rotate up, and it's a 4v4, okay? But you pushing this turret forces their hand. It puts them in a very awkward position. It says it tells them, I need to either flank and fight these guys, or I need to back or counter jungle. Like, if they're sitting here counter jungle while they're taking the turret, then you're idiots. Right? Okay. Good job getting out. You're tanky. You're fine. So, yeah, you guys come back, and I don't even know. Maybe you get these guys, maybe you don't, right? But honestly, I think the better play is to force this turret. Because if Tom Kench and Udyr pressure these guys into staying, and these two stay bot, this is a potential inhibitor right here. Twitch is a lot of damage at this point in the game, a lot, okay? You would kill this turret very quickly between the three of you, right? You could kill this, kill this turret very quickly. You could potentially expose an inhib, or at least force them all to back, and then you have map presence. Yeah. yeah. Mike, as soon as they started fighting Udyr here, you should have immediately walked in here. Because then you wouldn't have even had to ult. You could have just been in position to actually cut them off, right? So, just better map awareness on that, and better comm communication. Right? As soon as he started getting fought here, you definitely should have walked down this way to start the skirmish. Yeah? You're 
You have four here. Okay. Udir is correct in going bot to stop the push. He should stay there and push this wave all the way out. All right. You four have a decision to make right here. It's kind of an awkward spot, right? In my humble opinion, this is what you should do. Tom Kench, push the wave from here. You three rotate up to this position and kill this wave as it hits you. By the time you're done killing it, you have to wait a few seconds for the rest of the minions, your minions, to get here. You push the tower down, you pressure it hard. You now have a split pushing into your butt and four man push top lane who also have a teleport Tom Kench with them. So let's say they, um, so that let's say Udir wins a one v one bot, and four people are top lane stopping you. Tom Kench te teleports bot and starts pushing this lane with Udir. You three appear, fall back a little bit, and wait to see what the enemy does. If they send everybody to stop these two, you keep pushing. All right, double teleport is great, but only if you're pressuring multiple lanes. Okay. Only if you're pressuring multiple lanes. Another thing I want to point out, the gold lead is not that much. It's really not that much. Yes, bot lane has a big CS lead. Yes. Mid lane is relatively close. But top lane is big time in favor of GP. He just has more AoE clear. Okay. Uh, Mike, just try to get as much farm as you can next time in lane, my friend. GP has AoE clear. He's got a big CS lead. Okay, they scale very well. Despite the fact you guys are 17 and 10, they can definitely, definitely win this. You should go into every mid late game team fight that isn't a blowout with that mentality. We're not ahead by that much, even if it feels like you are. We're not ahead by that much. We need to be careful about our positioning and play call. No, no. Okay, we are good job. Push this out. Now look, if you guys had stayed top, this tower is guaranteed dead. At this point, you've already, you probably already killed it. You pressuring mid is good, right? This is a good rotation, okay? You two rotating down here to pressure. This is like the next best option. But I want you to recognize that having four people top pushing this lane while Udir is a big pressure bot lane is a major benefit for the team. Your teammates are back here. You're too far up. If you don't have vision on Rengar and, uh, GP, and you don't have wards in their jungle to notice their roam, you should never be this far up, no matter how fed you are, okay? If this card that's went all in on you right now, you would not be able to nuke him down before the rest of the team arrives here. You'll be half HP because it's freaking Karthus and he hurts really bad. And yeah, these guys are going to arrive in, in time to fight, but you're entering the fight with a huge disadvantage you didn't need to have. Good try with the kiting, Ryan. So let's back that fight up. I don't want to watch that at high speed. I don't want to watch that at high speed. Okay. Alright. I want to see how this happens. You guys gotta know what's gonna happen here, right? Yeah, you see bot lane bot, and yes, you're about to have four people mid, but if Karthus starts walking up into you like this, when he doesn't have any minions yet, you know you're about to get engaged on. Twitch should immediately start going invisible, and Soraka should start running this way, angling herself down, because she knows that GP is potentially coming from topside. So no hesitation here, you should be running away. Immediately. Twitch, don't even, don't even angle back. Yeah, you end up getting a kill here, and it's great, okay? You kite this very well. You do. Yeah, you really do kite that well, bud. Okay, Udir, good job running up. Personally, if I were you... Oh, you don't have to teleport, never mind, I take it back. Good job rotating up, though. Tom, this is fine. All right, do your best to stay close to Ori, okay? Because there's a good chance you're going to need to actually uh, consume her to keep her alive, right? But you pressuring GP is just fine here. Once MF shows up, though, you should immediately abandon sticking to him and get close to Ori to CC anyone close to her 
and to consume her if you need to protect her, right? She's the hard carry of this game. So, at this point, your thought should be, Ori's in a rough spot, I need to auto GP, right? And then, if I were you, I would swallow him. Have Ori burst down MF's health, and then spit GP out as far away from Ori as possible. Let's see what actually happens. That was better. I didn't even think about the option of her just blasting GP. Honestly, I thought he was tankier than that. Good job stunning him, blasting him, and then from here on out, it's an easy fight. Meanwhile, uh, Rengar killed Twitch, which is unfortunate, but he was kiting well. Udyr, this is fine. right? You know they're going to win this 2v2, so you're just hitting the first thing you see. Absolutely fine. Keep in mind that you should know Rengar is up here. Very low health. Um, you sticking to Nami is fine. Uh, but just keep in mind that you also had the option to go up and try to pick out Rengar. Good job, Rengar died to poison? Aced. Okay. Great. Wait, did he? No. No, he didn't. Did he die to the... Did he die to the wolf camp? I think he freaking died to the wolf camp. I think he died to the wolf camp. Oh, I gotta know. I gotta know. I'm sorry, I'm wasting time. I have to know. He dies to the wolf camp. Alright. Devourer, Rengar Jungle. Everybody. Alright. Not much else to say about that. You guys played that fight well. Good job. It, was, it, it broke out in an interesting spot. Twitch, with how fed you were, I think your positioning here when the fight was going on was fine. Um, honestly, if I were you, it would have been much better for you to immediately peel back to your team and fight from there. Um, hopefully with Soraka helping you survive or surviving herself. It worked out where you got two kills here and you ended up being a force in the fight, but you guys were too far up. So just keep that in mind next time. This late in the game, you need to be more focused on sticking to the group, especially since... Oriana was super fed going into this fight. Now she's mega fed, right? The whole team comp should revolve around her at that point. The entire team fight atmosphere should be completely revolved around what she wants to do. Kai, you being ballsy like that was totally fine, uh, since you're so fed. Uh, just make sure you tell the team to stick with you. Good job there. There really isn't much else I can say about that. Kai, I think if you stayed up close... Oh, well, actually, Soraka might have been healing you the whole time, and that's why you have this much health. If you had, like a quarter health while Tom was fighting up here. I think you could have stayed closer and potentially got some combos off, but uh, I think that was fine. You don't know where they are. If you're doing this with the intention of drawing pressure so that Twitch can split push, good job. If you're randomly just here because you don't care anymore and you think the game's over, this isn't ridiculous. All right, you're standing on wards. One person has a sweeper and hasn't used it to find the wards. All right. If you're going to sit in their jungle at this HP, at the very least clear the vision. And that's assuming that you're doing this so that Twitch can push, right? If Again, if you're doing this so Twitch can push, great. You still should have swept the wards and then retreated as soon as they fought you. All right, but this is way too aggressive and way too cocky of a play. I'm not going to say anything about that. Good job, Ryan. Using Twitch as a split push threat is really good. Um, oh. 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 Alright, 
yeah. As soon as you killed him, you should have left. Because you knew more people were coming. That's just being cocky. At, at, at this point in the game, honestly, you guys are doing so many things that are just like too cocky. You should just be grouping mid and killing this turret. Like, or baroning, right? Like, a really good idea, what you should be doing right now, okay, here's what you should ideally be doing right now. You send Udi your bot. He pushes like a maniac, no one's gonna 1v1 him, alright? You send Tom Kench top, push like a maniac. You send three mid. If they send one person bot who does not have teleport, you four man Baron, and you leave him to push. If they fight, Udi your teleports in. If they don't, okay, if they fight, you do your teleports in. If they don't fight, right, and they let you have it and send a bunch of people back to you, you're great. If they five-man you, okay, if they five-man you and you've already lost the fight, you back up, save who you can, and let Udyr kill an inhibitor, right? That's split pushing 101. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Being fed must be nice. However, you shouldn't be giving up dragons if you have this group of yeah, you're gonna get the top outer turret. You should have gotten this ages ago. This should be something you have a, your eyeball on as something you need to get. And I don't know why Carlos and Twitch are killing each other. But you guys are just getting way too aggressive. In fact, I'm actually gonna stop watching here. Because at this point, like, it's very clear that you're just walking around. Kind of doing whatever you want because you know you have a big lead. But you should be grouping as five. No, no, no. With this composition, you should be grouping as four and sending Weedier to split push. Right? With the intention of taking turrets as four, or you should be grouping as four and sending you your split push with the intention of doing Baron as four. Okay? That should be your priority with this competition. Anyway, that's what I'm going to cut off for here. Um, yes, I realize the game still has a bit of time to go, but I think I've said all I need to say about laning phase, what your composition should have been, how you should have approached the scenarios in the game. Overall, guys, honestly, you're looking good. Again, I'm a stickler. I'm going to point out the mistakes I see. I'm going to be a little bit picky. Um, but realistically speaking, you played well. Ryan, your position positioning is a little too aggressive sometimes. This comp's built around you being a carry and you being a major force, despite the fact that Kai's obviously super fed. You need to be a little more careful. Uh, Soraka, you got a lot of vision down. You've got your, you're the only one on the team with a pink down, right? But in that early game, you had a little bit of a discrepancy in terms of what you had down and how you approached some of those ganks they did. Good job there. If you had red trinkets that were upgraded, you would be able to see him and kill him, no problem. Just throwing it out there. Alright. Um, other things I want to point out. Tom Kench, get better at farming. Um, also, make sure you're constantly looking to make teleport plays in other lanes or alt in other lanes to make plays in terms of killing people, right? Getting other lanes ahead. Um, and late game, make sure you split push with teleport in the bottom play. Um, Oriana, Kai, you got mega fed. You should have used your lead earlier to pressure more. Other than that, you played this well. Um, to don't miss your alts. And, uh... Oh dear, you did fine. I think you could have prioritized your early game a little bit better. You went a little too aggressive twice and got killed. When you go devour, you need to be more focused on getting farm and getting stacks. More so than ganking, okay? And as soon as you get the devour, look to a dragon. I know you couldn't this game, but that should be something you keep in mind for the future. Um, and that's really all I got. So, good game, guys. I'm um, looking forward to watching the other one. I'm not going to do an analysis of the other one, but this is looking, like, really good. I can't wait to actually spectate some of your games and talk about so, I'll cut the broadcast off here, and I'll send you this video soon. But anyway, great work, dudes. I'll talk to you soon.